Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to another Blood Splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Dracula. And I just got done, well, actually, I saw it a week ago, but I saw Insidious The Last Key. My good buddy Count Dracula has not seen it, but I, I wanted to try having him be a soundboard while I talk about the movie for once, because uh, normally when I do these solo vlogs, I just do it by myself, and it takes forever to edit and stuff like that, and I kind of wanted to get the Insidious vlog out like before it's irrelevant, because <laughs> it's in theaters right now. Yep. So I'm going to tell my good buddy Count Jacula about Insidious The Last Key, and uh, you guys get to watch as I review and talk about my thoughts of the movie. All right, Insidious The Last Key is interesting because it's not a great movie, but it okay. is a movie that I've thought better about as time has gone on since watching it. Okay, so it's better than Insidious 2. It's way better than Insidious 2. Okay, Now, good it to know. is way safer than Insidious 2 as well. Oh, dear. Insidious 2 takes a lot of really crazy risks and... <laughs> really don't pan and, out. And they don't pan out. They don't pan out. But I at least, I at least admire the movie for going for shit. It, but, but trying. The but movie there's, tries. there's a lot of things about it that I don't, uh, don't like. Like one of the things I really don't like about Insidious 2 is that it goes back on a lot of things from Insidious 1 and it introduces time travel and it's, oh, I, so it bad. just doesn't work for me. Um, <laughs> but this one, this is actually a prequel. Um, chronologically, it sits as number two in the series. It goes Insidious 3 is a prequel. Insidious 4 is a prequel, and then Insidious 1 and 2. That's how the chronological... <laughs> Holy the shit, we're on four of these things <laughs> yes. already? Oh my this god. This is Insidious 4. The last key is Insidious 4, which is why they stopped numbering it, because... Bleh. Bleh. Yeah. High numbers scare people. Yeah, so I was... Well, I was <laughs> that means I missed Insidious 3. Yes. Um, from what I hear, I have not actually seen Insidious 3, but from what I've heard from people, it is way better than 2. Okay. Um, which, based on Insidious 4, I would say, yes. If, four, <laughs> if it's anything like 4, then it is better than 2. Not as good as 1, but it's not great. Um, uh. A lot of the problems I have with with this one is that everything... Because the the, the Insidious 4 follows Lin Shay's character, which I believe uh, Insidious 3 did as well. Yeah. Um, the, the, psych, the psychic... Um, investigator psychic from, old lady yeah the psychic old lady from the first one and the second one um who dies <laughs> in between those movies um but is alive in this one because it's a prequel um it's basically the case they take right before the first movie starts um and it's all about lynn shay's past it's all about her childhood going back to her childhood home and dealing with the first ghost she ever actually encountered okay um as well as the first demon she ever actually encountered, but didn't realize it was a demon at first. Okay. Um, and uh, everything, every flashback of her as a child dealing with her super abusive father and her kind of uh, useless mother and her brother that she loves, but she just can't keep staying in that house. Yeah. It means she has to abandon her brother. Everything about that works wonderfully. It is well written. It is creepy. I can relate to it in many ways. And it is um, the actual ghost and demon stuff in those in those flashbacks are actually legitimately creepy. Um, unfortunately, I feel like when it cuts to the present and her taking the case, a lot of the dialogue takes a nosedive at that point. Everything feels super on the nose. People are all saying what they're feeling, and it is exactly what they're feeling, and there's no subtlety to it. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas when oh, you dear. when you have all the flashbacks, you have all the subtlety of abusive father, and everyone kind of knows he's abusive, but everyone's trying to maintain a happy face. Right. So you have all this subtext, you have all this subtlety, you have things that are being said without being said. Whereas you got to the present, it feels like everything is just being said, and there's nothing to chew on. <laughs> And right. it's too bad, because Lynn Shea is a great actress, but even her performance can't save the fact that all the dialogue feels very dry. Got it, got it. So I gotta ask, like, there was always one thing about going from Insidious 1 to Insidious 2. Yes. That always bugged me, which was, okay, what does Darth Maul Demon have to do with this? <laughs> Darth Maul Demon is just a demon that was stalking a little boy in the first one. That's that's it? That's what that's, he is. That's, that's the whole um, thing. This movie does have an ending because, like I said, it's a prequel. So it basically ends with her getting the call that starts Insidious 1. Okay. And she has like this nightmare about the Darth Maul Demon before she gets the call because she knows. So she knows that this is going to happen and yada, yada, yada. That's what Darth Maul Demon is. Okay. <laughs> He's a demon who kidnapped a little kid. Okay. <laughs> so... Question, what's with the 
oh yeah, this is why I hated Insidious 2, because I think about like, <laughs> okay, so I you leave Insidious 1 going like, oh shit, the demon possessed the dad. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. in Insidious 2, that's not what happens, but I forget how that's not what happens. Well, the demon did possess the dad, but then it unpossessed him. It, that's why I don't like 2. Like, 2 is yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made no sense. Well, because here's the thing about Insidious 1 and Insidious 2 is that there was two demons at play. There was the, the one is a demon, one's a ghost. The ghost is the ghost of this old lady that has been haunting uh, uh, the dad. Oh, okay. Um, but they don't explain that until the second one. And I was glad that they were explained it, but I didn't like the way they explained it in the second one. Yeah, yeah. you happy to have an answer, but the answer sucked. Um, so that's why in all of his old photographs, there was this old lady that was always standing there because he was always oh, being haunted by this. Okay. Because he, both him and his son have the same kind of psychic abilities that Lin Shea does, but they just don't realize it. That's why when they sleep, they astral project. Oh. So that's why the okay. demons and ghosts are drawn to them. Okay, got it. That was actually explained in the first Insidious. <laughs> All right. I just didn't realize that there was like, here was the thing about the first Insidious is it wasn't, it worked because it wasn't real clear, but in the second movie it became super important, which was, no, there are two entities at yeah. play here. There's a yeah. demon and a ghost. Yeah, and that second entity, the, the ghost, is the one that comes into play in Insidious 2, but I really don't like the way they handled no, that. No, no, I really I did don't. Not, didn't either. Like, I thought that was really dumb. Um, I, I, but uh, basically in this one, she gets a call from someone who lives in her old childhood home in Arizona. Okay. And basically it is a home that her, her father was a warden. Okay. So it was built right next to a prison and it was a prison in which executions were to take place. Ooh. So their house was just haunted by all these ghosts and stuff from people who were So you just got like dead inmates who yeah. were just sort of like as well as, these other, executed. Yeah. as well as these other ghosts that she has no idea what the origin of them are and just kind of assumes that they used to live there at some point. Right. Is is this as convoluted as the other Insidious movies? It's uh, less convoluted than two. Okay, good. Um, it's got some convolution that puts it on par with the first one. I cannot speak for the third one because I did not see it yet. Right. Which I probably should because I hear it is one of the better ones of the movies. But after Insidious two, my heart was broken. <laughs> that was well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you want to go go back to that particular like X at that point. Yeah, you know, because this is awful relationship. Um, um, <laughs> but like there is some convolution, which I'll go into when we get to the spoilers, but there's some stuff I want to talk about before we get to the spoilers that isn't really spoilering. Um, so basically she, she lived in this home. Her dad was a warden. They carried out executions next door and she grew up with the same kind of abilities that the boy did where she could actually project. She can see ghosts. She can do all this stuff. And her dad basically saw her as a little witch. That oh, okay. needed to be civilized. Oh. So her dad would try to beat the witch out of her. Oh, jeez. And would, like, lock her in the cellar and do all this stuff. But naturally, that's where the ghosts live, right? Like, right, it's right, cellar. right. So locking her in the cellar just meant that she'd spent most of her time down there communicating with ghosts that, some of which terrify her because it turns out some of them are not ghosts. Ah. <laughs> and plus, some of them are ghosts of of mass murdering inmates that were executed in the prison right next door. So some of them are just bad people. <laughs> yeah. So, so we already have ghosts and demons. They add anything else to the mix or in this it... one? No. Okay. In this one, no, you have ghosts and demons and psychics and that's, and that's basically, that's it. basically it. It's operating under the same rules that the other two movies that I saw. Set okay. Up. Okay. It doesn't really add anything new to it. Um, which I appreciate because after adding time travel to the mix, I was a little like, eh, like. That, 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 blah, 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 blah. That was. But that fucked. does mean, that does mean it play, it plays it really safe in that regard. There's not much in this movie that you'll see that you did not see in the other ones, with the exception of the way this particular demon operates. Yeah. Now this is, uh, was this another James Wan movie? No. This one was written by the same guy who wrote the other three. Okay. But it was directed by, I think, one of their editors or something. I'm not entirely sure who it was, but it wasn't James Wan. And right. it wasn't the director of three, because that was the writer. <laughs> right. I've noticed something with the, um, uh, this is a Bloomhouse production, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've noticed something with a lot of these Bloomhouse movies that star, um, that same milk toasty dude who played Night Owl and Watchmen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, him. Um, which is that, man, they are convoluted. Yes. They're yes. super convoluted. Like, the conjuring is super convoluted. Yeah, yeah. The conjuring is convoluted, I think, mainly because um, 
you're taking all the shit from the Warren files and trying to make a coherent movie out of it, but it's like a series of random files that are very convoluted in and of themselves because they're making shit up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, like, what was that? What was that last one where it was like, okay, so you got the Crooked Man, which yeah. looked awesome. And then but we've a, also got Marilyn Manson nun. We're like, what? That is Come a reoccurring on. thing. For, that's one thing I really like about the Sinister movies is that the Sinister movies have the one monster. Yeah, it's just got Bagul. It has Bagul, whereas the Insidious and the Conjuring movies always have like two things operating at the same time. Yeah. This movie has the one demon and a whole bunch of random ghosts because of the nature of the house. Okay. Um, <laughs> so... You know that at any point in time, even though the ghosts all have their individual scares and whatever, they are not the main threat. <laughs> right. The main threat is this demon, because this demon, this demon is, the way it operates is it basically, it stalks you, it uh, makes you feel like you're safe, and then when you're starting to like fall asleep or something like that, it comes upon you, and it has these key fingers. But you can't scream, because it'll turn off your voice box. <laughs> okay. And, and it will do all these things with its fingers. Its fingers have all these like magic powers, like it will turn off your heart to kill you. <laughs> um, and basically, it takes you into the, uh, it basically collects your souls. In uh, these little jail cells in the further. <laughs> okay, so okay, so ba basically, it's basically an on... evil warden. Yeah, it's oh, an evil warden. Oh yeah. Okay. So basically, the demon and the dad kind of have this like metaphorical. Thing yeah, going yeah. On. That's a, okay. Th yeah, that's a yeah, that's a decent metaphor. Yeah, actually. yeah. And it works. Yeah. And that, that works pretty well. And that works pretty well. Because yeah, usually these the two forces they got nothing to do with each that, other. It, it does. It <laughs> it actually makes thematic sense in the movie. <laughs> You just kind of wish when you have these scenes, like when Lin Shay is encountering her brother for the first time after leaving home and abandoning him with their dad, like you wish that they had more nuanced conversations than just outright stating how they feel. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It just feels really clunky because I'm just like, people don't usually just outright say what they're how they feel right off the bat as like an opening statement like it's not yeah <laughs> yeah hi i was molested by my uncle yeah, exactly when I was five. It's, it's like almost hi. on that level of like <laughs> you left me with our dad and he beat me i'm like whoa you just right off the bat open with that damn <laughs> Hello to you too, new I was character. expecting a little like passive aggression before we got into that, you know? It's like <laughs> Yeah, it'd be a little, little snarking and then dad beat me. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good God. Yeah, that's that... the the thing I will say one hundred percent works though, is they bring back uh the two assistants from the first movie. Um, because it's Lynn Shay's case right before that, so her assistants are with her again. And all the comic relief with them works really well in this movie. It's cool. legitimately funny. Um, one of the assistants has this obsession with attaching lights to everything. <laughs> So he like he he'll, like take like his one of the character's glasses and you're like, what the fuck are my glasses? And he's just like, hey, look. Lights. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just like attaching lights to everything. Every time it's like, oh shit, what are we gonna do right here? He's like Hey guys, light. <laughs> and every time that would happen, I would just be like, okay, that's working. That's working. That's that's great. Like him meeting Lin Shay, th those two meeting Lin Shay's nieces and hitting on them, hilarious. It <laughs> works really well. Okay, uh, so so it sounds like for the most part the movie works, but I'm hearing some like hesitation. My hesitation is that a lot, like it, it's just it's a little too safe and. A lot of the dialogue feels very clunky. Mm. A lot of the creepy moments really work. But that being said, the overall arcing story of Lin Shay confronting this demon of her past, and 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 in a way also confronting her father, and and abandoning her family um, with her father and all that stuff. Her confronting all that, that all coming full circle, that all works really well, really really well. Um, I just wish the dialogue in the present was less. It had more nuance to it, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I I, I know what you mean. I've um, seen so many of those types of movies that. Well, I mean, it's it's very common in horror movies. Yeah, like it's very common for like 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 low budget, uh, B grade horror movies to just do that. And there are many that I do that I like that do that, and it's okay because I'm not expecting much more. 
than that. Yeah. I think it's mainly because Insidious 1 was way more nuanced in the way it handled a lot of these things. It, it was. It, <laughs> uh, the, a lot of the Insidious movies, one of the problems I, I often had with them is I always felt like they were a little pretentious. Yeah, well, they are. Yeah. <laughs> they are. The, what I will say about this movie, this feels a little less pretentious than, than the other ones, even though it still does some of the Insidious stuff. Got it. Um, so I guess with all that said, I should probably move on to the spoilers so I can start talking about the nitty gritty of the movie. So uh, as per usual, I'm going to put an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Um, since this movie is currently in theaters, I doubt there'll be a pre-order link available for it yet. So I'll include a link, an Amazon affiliate link to like Insidious 1, 2, and 3 and stuff. So there we go. And with that all said, let us move on to the spoilers. <laughs> Alrighty then. So, um, uh, what I guess one of the biggest spoilers of this whole thing is that it turns out the guy, and this is where we talk about convolution. Okay. Um, some of the convolution. The guy who calls her, who's like, I'm living in this house. It's I'm, I'm living in murder jail I'm living in murder jail house. Uh, there's all these ghosts. I need you to help me. And her realizing, oh, it's, it's, it's my childhood home. This is where I used to live. He himself is a murderer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So we've got a demon, ghosts, and a murderer. But here's the thing. Here's how the movie actually makes this bit of convolution work, in my opinion. Okay. Because it turns out he's being possessed by the demon. Oh, okay. Because it also, she finds out over the course of the movie that her dad was doing this too, and that some of the ghosts of these girls that she was seeing ah. when she was sleeping were people her dad killed. But it wasn't her dad. Her dad was being possessed by this demon. Oh, okay. So the way this <laughs> the key finger demon yeah. works is he gets in somebody, starts murdering people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then in the afterlife, the demon form of it collects them in these little jail cells. Got and it. And it originally possessed her dad because her dad was a warden. So it kind of... Oh. <laughs> okay. So it takes on those characteristics. Yes. You know... Yes, absolutely. But the the big um the big heart wrenching thing about this whole thing was that she was the one who let this demon out. Oh. <laughs> oh, like she's the one that found it. Yeah, yeah, she's the one who found it. Now it's not necessarily entirely her fault. Her dad, scared of her abilities and stuff like that, locks her in the basement. Is basically is like, no, you can't see ghosts. You're not coming out until you admit that. Like trying to like bury it under the rug because he's just, just right. terrified of the implications of all this thing because he's a fucking warden who's executed a bunch of criminals and he can't have ghosts exist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and, but while she's in that basement, like this, this, this voice just like, hey, <laughs> why are you scared? <laughs> you know, and this, this whole scene works. This whole scene of the demon Kyle Lauren is like, hey, come over here. <laughs> I'm in this door. I just need you to open it. I just need you to open it and use the key. Your oh, man. Key. Let me out. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so they're going into like a demon. Kind, some demons kind of have to be let in. Yes, yes. Um, and there's an actual physical door in the basement, but it's very clear that when this is happening, she's astral projecting. So the door right. is actually not a door in the house. It is a door to the other side. Right. Oh, I just realized something about the title of these movies, Insidious. It's all about things that are inside things. Yes. Oh, god damn it. Yes. And this movie that took really... way longer than it should Yeah, and this movie, <laughs> this movie makes that very apparent when they're dealing with that stuff. So that really worked really well. And then and then when she, like, opens the door and unlocks it and and the demon's hand comes out, it takes the key and the key forms with, his fing with the finger. Oh. And so now it can come out anytime it wants. Got it. Okay. Well, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. just, okay. The demon's actually really fucking cool in this movie. <laughs> um, and, uh, so it turns out that everyone that, 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 so it turns out after she does that, it starts possessing her father. And her father was already a bad dad, already kind of abusive. Right. Probably why it was let in in the first place into the dad's body. Cause... Yeah. 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 Basically like, oh, this won't be easy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and, and so, there is this moment when she's a little kid and she and her brother are playing and she sees this woman in the house and she, she sees ghosts all the time and she's just, she thinks it's a ghost or whatever. The big twist is that it turns out it was not a ghost. Oh, it was a girl that the the dad had kidnapped and was keeping in the basement and was dead. And so when she sees it, when she comes back to the house, it is a ghost at that point. Oh. But the problem was, was that her telling her dad, she saw the ghost told him that she got out. 
And so when he found her hiding in the in the laundry room, he beat her to death. Oh. oh. <laughs> But then when she comes back to the house that she came to when she when she comes back to the house uh, to investigate for this guy that called, um, that's the ghost that's wandering around most of the time. And she runs into this ghost and, and she she's not quite sure what the ghost wants, but it turns out the ghost is trying to help her. Oh, OK. <laughs> the ghost is trying to help her because the ghost is, is basically like, I am not the thing here that's doing this. Yeah, there's another thing. There's another there's thing another here another and creature. it's inside him. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's inside the guy who called you. Oh. The demon called you back. <laughs> oh, okay. I get it. So the demon wants her back in the yeah. house. Got it. So what does he want her to do? The demon wants her, wants wants to collect her soul and the soul of the rest of the family because she escaped. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's it, like it, unfinished business. Yeah, yeah, unfinished business. And it ends up over the course of the story, um, uh, ends up taking her niece... Um, so she ends up having to go to the further with her other niece because they both have the ability. Cause it turns out right, the right. girls in the family are inheriting this very particular ability. And so her, uh, her niece and her and her niece basically have to go into the further to find, uh, her niece's sister and confront the demon that has been possessing the men in their family. And Oh geez. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, uh, there's this great, th- there's this great motif in, in the story where at the beginning of the story, um, uh, their mom, when their dad was being extra abusive and stuff like that, gave the little kid, gave the kids this whistle. Oh, okay. Blow this whistle and I will come and make sure you're okay. I will right. be here. And she ends up finding the whistle while she's going through this house and then the demon takes it. And then later when she's in the further, she finds it again. And at the end, when the demon is the basically got them all like where they want them, got them captured, beating the shit out of them, going to kill Lin Shay in the afterlife. So she right. just chooses to exist. She gets the whistle after the demon turned off her voice box, blows into it. And then her mom shows up <laughs> and beats the demon with this magic lantern. And, it's like, <laughs> and I'm just like, this is really stupid, but I kind of feeling it. Yeah. I'm kind of feeling it. <laughs> it's kind of working. It's kind of working. I kind of like it. <laughs> Man, I gotta, I gotta ask though, <laughs> what the, f- what the fuck? Why are these movies getting so fucking I do, complicated? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 it's a weird byproduct of, I guess, since we've all seen all the tropes and trappings of ghost stories, people have to come up with convoluted ways to make them feel different. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, but I, I don't know. Like, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I feel like it works more often than it doesn't in this movie. Um, I just wish the dialogue and a lot of the personal exchanges between characters were a little less on the nose. Uh, I wish there was sounds a little, about right. I wish there was a little more nuance to it. Um, and I wish some of the, I wish, I wish the scene, I wish the scary scenes that happened in the present were as scary as the stuff that happened in the past. Cause I felt like they kind of blew their load on all the really creepy shit with all the flashback stuff. Now, granted, I, sounds like it. Now, granted, they spread some of that flashback stuff out throughout the movie, so it's not like you just all get it at the front of the movie, right? But like, you do kind of feel like, why can't the present stuff be as creepy as that? Like, it's <laughs> yeah, I can, I, 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 I can see that. I can see that. All right, so question, yeah. All right, so we know where this sits in the Insidious franchise, but is there another movie that you can think of that this is like kind of on par with? On par with, um. I probably like this about as much as I like some of the Poltergeist sequels. Oh, okay. So, like, Poltergeist 2 and 3. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They're not the best. They're they're definitely not the first one. No. Um, But I still kind of enjoy them in their own ways. I I gotta agree. (laughs) I I have a soft spot for Poltergeist 2. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. It's not the best. Even some of the ways where, where I'm talking about at the end of the movie that I think are kind of, like, really stupid. They kind of work for me in a way the stupid from the second one didn't. Got it. Time travel, man. Time travel, man. Marty, there, there's a, there is a brief it. moment where they kind of bring back the time traveling for like a small moment. There's a moment where Lin Shay, yeah, while she's in the further, encounters little Lin Shay. <laughs> 
And that 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 scene is just like I don't think it was entirely necessary, and I'm not really cool with the time traveling on top of everything. But yeah, it's one of those things where whenever <laughs> when they introduce the time traveling, I'm like, I know what you're talking about, and I know what you're going for. But stop, yeah. you know. But stop. It's a step too far for me for this it, franchise. It, it kind of is. Like, well, actually, for me, the step too far was giving, um, young. 20 something Lin Shay, old Lin Shay's voice. Yes. That was like, that, no, don't do that. That was one of the most hilariously bad moments of the, of the second one. It was. I kind of, here's the thing about the second one is I love it for how bad it is, but it is awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like the minute you notice that, like, you, you just, you're not paying attention to the story anymore. You're like, you're, you're watching lips to see if the voice yeah. syncs up. And it does. Yeah. It does. They do a great dubbing job, but. Why didn't they just use the young actress's voice? Well, it also feels weird because it's very clearly an old lady's voice coming out of a young woman. Yeah. You can tell. You can yeah. feel it. It doesn't work. Yeah. It's and, like... and, and here's the other thing. Like, you look at older movies with young Lin Che, she doesn't sound like that. Like, she... No. She... <laughs> like... No. <laughs> you know? You know, I just, I just found myself going, like, I wish they had just used the actress's voice so when it gets to the point where you realize it is Lin Shay again, you're like, oh, okay, it was her. Yeah. Okay, got it. Exactly. You know, like you would with any fucking normal movie. I know. You know, know. but no, we got to And I haven't seen Insidious 3, but after seeing this one, I might want to check it out because I did hear it was better than 2. So if it's on par with this, I might enjoy it. You're going to the, you're, you're the canary in that coal mine. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the canary in the Insidious 3 coal mine. Yeah. And I'm not sure what more to say about this movie. I like this movie. I don't think you need to go out to the theater to see it. You could probably wait till it hits uh, Netflix or Amazon or any of those rental rental services and check it out there. And that'll probably be just as fine. Um, and uh, I guess with all that said, uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. Uh, be sure to check me out on Twitch TV slash The Horror Guru, all one word. And uh, where can they find you, Count Jackula? Well, they can find me at Twitter at Count underscore Jackula or at Twitch TV, Count Jackula. You know? There you it's go. it's pretty fucking simple. It's like, pretty simple. You know, also, you can find me on Twitter at, at the Horror Guru. So, and with that all said, my fellow Gorehounds, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.